there's our boy right there. Welcome back. Uh, it is the next day, which is, what day is it, Thursday? Yeah. And we have picked up Brandon, and we were heading to Phoenix to look at an old Shelby GT350 uh, that Brandon's going to do some uh, pictures of and uh, document a little bit, kind of a the history of it possibly, and we're going along for the ride, so we're excited about that. Where's our boy? There he is right there. He's back there. There he is. That's our guy Brandon right there. And then, uh, yeah, we're ready to go, and I'm going to turn the camera around here real quick. And there it is, the Pacifica. If, what, what do you say about the uh, Pacifica again? Brandon, you got a buddy that says what? <laughs> What's he say about them? There isn't a replacement. Yeah, and he's not going to shoot unless it's a Pacifica? No. no. <laughs> That's all there is, is Pacifica minivans. Faster than anything I own, comfortable, the air is cold. I'm in love. Well, day after the Shelby uh, inspection, uh, walk around, tour, what we did yesterday. Not going to quite show that yet. Uh, going to hold on to that film. Just kind of things happen with that car. and Don't really want to, um, for sake of the new owner, he asked not to show anything. So, John Scrap says, I'm going to start over, buddy. Start over. This is terrible. Okay, so uh, we're not going to show you the Shelby quite yet. Uh, we're going to hold on to that. Um, as a request of the current owner and uh, so we're gonna just uh, keep on going with our adventure here and we are departing Phoenix this morning and yesterday on the way in we seen some Edsel's on the side of the road uh, off the interstate so we're gonna uh, Brandon and Eric I think Brandon actually pinned it yesterday at lunch and found exactly where we thought we saw them and this morning we drove right to them so we're gonna take a look at those and walk around in here a bit So he's got three of them here all lined up. So they made Edsel's for three years, and I'm only just saying what uh, Eric had just told me. So I'm, a, I'm not an Edsel aficionado by any means, but uh, Eric's over there talking to the owner of the cars. He's super cool, and he's got a problem with a tranny in one of them, and Eric's actually helping him <laughs> uh, with possible solution to get it fixed. So, uh, so 58, 59, and 60, you just kind of see the different differences in the grills. This one here is like 1% uh, restored. This here on the end, the sign says, and the 141st one built. So and that's the one he's having transmission problems with. So that is just like Eric's, the one he's got. He's got the two-door version. And Eric's an Etzel man, so we had to stop, of course. 59 here. That's like Eric's silver one that was in some of our videos. And of course, we did a feature on this car, on Eric's feature, on his 58. Um, we got to ride in that when he first got it, so that was awesome. And then here is the 60, which Eric was just telling me that uh, looks a lot like a 60 Ford, and they share a lot of, like the floor pans and the frame. Sounds like a lot of it's just Ford and just kind of rebodied in some areas to make it look Edsel because they were, yeah, not making any money. Uh, and they were just trying to get another one out and the cheapest way they could do it, I guess, was on a Ford platform, which is probably a pretty good deal, especially if you're trying to restore one. There's probably a lot more parts like floor pans and stuff like that that would interchange if you're trying to chase rust and fix it. Pretty cool cars. I think so. Big dog. Burn rubber for a mile. My old man tells a story about riding one of these when he was a kid. So this is the. Uh, and uh, Al, yeah. thanks for uh, 
taking the time, showing us your cars, had a great time. Um, and uh, yeah, all three lined up, and you said you probably have the only three, the 58, 59, and 60, that actually probably run. I don't think there's a lot of people that do. Yeah. Probably, or I'm sure there's other people, but right. they, a lot of them are probably more trailer queens. They're not driving them weekly. You drive all three all week, right? Yeah, I try and get 20 miles a week. Week on each one. 20 miles awesome. a week on each one. That's pretty good. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. We appreciate it. You bet. Thanks thank you. Stop. Thanks for stopping. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, we'll, we'll be through next time. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you. How's it look? Pretty tall. Can you see the runways? Good? Yes. Good deal. Tough phone. I cracked it a little bit. More than it already was? Yeah. Yeah. Destroyed my life. What is this little thing here, man? Maybe a fan or something? I had a fan in there to keep it cool or something like an exhaust oh, fan, yeah. right? I didn't see the sign said private property. Did you? No. Oh, well, maybe we did. It's, it's always best to uh, beg for forgiveness and ask for permission, is what they say. So we made it to Palm Springs, and this is uh, Frank Sinatra's old house, old Blue Eyes. I guess the piano shaped pool is around the other side of the shrubbery on the other side of the wall and you can rent this for events our friend Brandon was here for an event for Chevy here eight years ago or so nineteen forty seven a couple years before the Omaha was finished twin palms it's called oh wow Pretty neat. Twin palms. Old blue eyes. Think of the parties you used to have here. Yeah. You know what I mean? What do you think? Pretty cool? Pretty, cool. Pretty exciting. The adventure just keeps continuing, don't it? It does. Bob's big boy tonight? Yep. In Burbank? Yep. You see a big car show? Hope so. Eat a good burger? Oof. Talking my language. Maybe said it's the Beatles boot. What? <laughs> Rick walked off that on the cable. She just walked right off the edge. Fear less, yeah. Well, she married me, so. It was not bad. We'll travel over two and one and a half miles of cable to rise well on the freeway. It sure is. The chair average is some 40 degrees cooler. The wine will change and the trees and flowers will grow. We'll travel over five towers. Oh, I'm just like sitting on the edge of it. I'm like, going 200 some miles an hour. He's 24. He's 24. With the weights left over. Let's go. And I'm like, and then like, it's dominant. It's like, literally just like, one shoe, and falling out. So good. <laughs> Careful with the rev limiter here. We're at high altitude, right? We're about actually off of a... Uh, uh, yeah, GSXR 1000 feels like a 750 at 10,000 feet. I've heard that. <laughs> you were doing this in the seat? Jeez. I'm 
might have, I might have a quarter on me, actually. Well, we made it through the tram. Lived through that. It was awesome. Brandon's idea. Thank you, Brandon. Well done. Uh, now we're probably waiting for some folks here to get off the tram. They're going to go to the different parking lots here. That's Palm Springs. But uh, now we're heading to we're heading to uh, the valley, right? And to the pawn shop from Pulp Fiction, yeah. <laughs> which is really close to Brennan's house. And then we're going to head over to Bob's Big Boy in Burbank for the car show tonight, Friday night car show. So we're hoping to see some, some iron over there. So we're excited. And um, yeah, see you at the next stop. This is crazy. Well, we made it to Bob's. We're going to have to go to the pawn shop tomorrow from Pulp Fiction. We just drove here because of traffic and uh, let's check it out. What's up, buddy? How you doing, sir? Good, thank you. Dunk. Corvair. How you doing, sir? Hey, good. Is this yours? Yeah. Wow, very cool. You remember that scene where Morris beats up Jenny's boyfriend? Oh, yeah. That's that. Yep. I rented it to them in 93. Oh, okay. How that long, huh? I restored her in 85. I've been driving her 39 years, and she's about to turn 800,000 miles. Wow, that's awesome, dude. Very cool. I've had seven rebuilds on the engine. How'd you get? How'd you find it? She was, I saw an ad in the LA Times on a junkyard in LA, and so I rescued her. She was beat to shit, and so right. I, everything was messed up, but she ran decent, so I restored her over the years. And Sweet. Yeah, I was working at Paramount, they saw it on the lot and said, hey, you want to use that for the movie? I had it white, and then they painted it silver for the movie. Okay. And then uh, this last time around, uh, I always like this, it's a 65 GM color called Evening Orchid. Yeah. They painted the Corvair that color that year, but by then the body style had changed to, with the course of more of a sport. Like, uh, to look like, I guess they wanted to compete with a Camaro.
Thank you. Oh, you're doing good. You're doing good. Gabriella, party of two, shape to the back. Good brother. Thank you. It's very awesome, dude. Very cool.
Close the mail. Place. All right, now on to the pawn shop from Pulp Fiction. So, uh, end of uh, day three, I think, right? And uh, Brandon's leaving us tonight. Brandon, thank you uh, for going along on our adventure. And Eric, we'll probably do a little bit more in the morning. But um, in tribute of you being such a great host, Brandon, and, and showing us around and getting us to what's behind the camera here, which we're look excited to show you, is the pawn shop from Pulp Fiction. So let's let's just do it. Boom. How awesome is that? Zed's dead. Zed's dead, baby. That's right. <laughs> I, had a, I had to wreck that Honda, baby. You know what I mean? I had to crash that Honda. That's what chopper, she said. Baby. Yeah. Didn't she say, where's my Honda? Yeah. When she shows up or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't even know. Yeah. This is it. Right inside this door, movie magic. There's a counter in there just like yeah. it would have looked, I yeah. think. Right? Yep. Can't really see through there. There's like two two cages in there to even to get through the next. There's a cage inside that door. Through the other cage is a cage. Yeah, so good. All right. Well, thank you, brother. Yeah. Appreciate you.